Hi, my name's Dean Barlow. Back again on the beautiful River Wye. And if you've been following the little series that uh, we've been doing, where we've covered whip fishing, stick float fishing, and bolo fishing. Now, I'm having a go on a, a method that can put together some massive weights of fish. It's the shallow waggler. Obviously there has to be a lot of fish in the area to catch on a method like this. And the River Wye is certainly that river. The idea is, is to fish a waggler, not on the bottom, exactly like it says, shallow, meaning in the upper layers. To do that, you've got to have the right, the right fish willing to come off the bottom and intercept the bait. Dace are the perfect species and we're having another red letter day. So to catch these fish shallow in winter conditions, you've got to keep the feed going in. You've got to keep the feed going in so the fish are competing. The more the fish compete, the shallower they'll become and the more fish you catch. It's just absolutely ravenous at the moment. I'm getting a bite every cast in. But you can get it slightly wrong. It's no point firing loads of bait in, missing loads of bites if you're not putting any fish in the net. So feeding is absolutely essential. You could keep just catapulting maggots in all the time and it, you get the fish in your peg, but they, they go really scatty, which means that you get false bites and the fish aren't actually taking the one that's on the hook. But when you do get it right, the Y offers unbelievable fishing, like these great big dace here. Absolutely beautiful fish. So it does take some time to get the feed, feeding absolutely perfect. Like I've just said, it's very easy you could be just like a windmill, catapulting, baiting, casting out, striking, getting no fish. So you have to come to what we call a feeding pattern. What is the best way and most efficient way to get most out of your peg? It's like, just then I've not fed any maggots for three casts and I've caught two fish straight away because the fish are still in the upper layers, but the only the only bait available is on my hook. But you can't keep, you can't keep fishing like that because the fish do want bait. So that's like the compromise that you have to come to. See how many times you can cast in without feeding before you need to feed again. So that time there I missed, I missed a bite. So what I will do is if you notice, I've not cast my waggler out into the swim, so I'm going to feed some bait. But it's all ready, it's only a yard below my, my rod tip, just ready to, to cast in, to make the most of those fish that are feeding in the maggots. It's a very, very active method. Pretty good on cold winter days like today. The setup itself couldn't be simpler. Because you're fishing in the upper layers, you need a short, quite dumpy waggler. So it settles quickly in the peg. The waggler I've got on today is three treble A. It's got two three quarter of a gram waggler weights attached and just three number eights down the line. Most of the fish will be caught as the, as the bait's falling through. But depth plays a massive part. Just because you see the fish swirl for the bait on right in the upper layers doesn't always mean that's where you need to be. Sometimes the light, you get more response as it's falling through the water, just like the natural, uh, the natural the natural fall of the maggots. So don't be too 
just because the fish are swirling in the loose feed, it doesn't mean that you need to fish right near the surface. Sometimes they're, they're eating the maggots as it goes further down. The depth I'm at at the moment is around two and a half feet deep, and I think it's probably about nine feet deep, the peg. So it's like just under a third of the depth. So I've just lost a couple of fish there, and I think I'm a bit late on the fish taking them, so I'm just going to take four, four or five inches of depth off. It may not seem a lot, but when the, when the fish are comfortable taking it at a certain depth, you've got to try and get to that depth. It might take you three or four attempts to actually find what is the right depth, but the difference will be, instead of missed bites or bumped fish, it will be a fish hooked straight in the mouth. And sometimes that can change throughout the session. You might have to, you might have to change the depth four or five times in an hour. You, you'll find out the way that the fish feeding best by striking at bites, hooking fish. The thing that can happen when there's this many fish in your peg, you can start hooking fish outside of the mouth where they are, where they're flashing for the bait which always means I think you're at the wrong depth. But when you get it right, there's some beautiful fish to be had. Hook-wise, 16, 16 maggot plus to 013 hook length. The fish, fishing double maggot, the fish are really on the feed, so there's no need to go too light. It's just a matter of, it's just getting the right feed to cast ratio. Probably could get away with a 14, but when I'm fishing like this, uh, I, I tend to think that they, they take the bait more confident, especially when you're fishing up in the water, they take it more confident with a slightly smaller hook on. But as you can see, the, the sport is tremendous. These days are absolutely beautiful. Quality fish. I'm sure some of them have never seen a hook before. When the fishing is as busy as this, you haven't always got to be the fastest, but you've got to be efficient. Everything needs to be to hand. As you can see here, a side tray with my spare wagglers on, all my terminals I need. I've got my bait waiter. I've got all my bait in there. I've got, I've got six pints of maggots. Whether I use them or not, I don't know, but I don't want to be getting up halfway through the session, having run out of maggots, having to get off my box, go up the bank. I've got everything to hand. Even my pole rest, just using it as a rod rest when I need to feed. Like I say, you don't always have to be the quickest. Efficiency is key. Yeah. Because this method is so active, you really need to be comfortable as well. You need to be in the right place, which is in the water. As you see, see today, I've got the oak box. The legs are at full extent. I've not got the, the outrigger on, because I'm only in about two foot of water. But I'm sitting nice and level. And I'm comfortable. Like I've just said, this, this kind of fishing is very, very active. You need to be moving around and everything like that. So you've got to be comfortable. Get your box nice and square so you, you, your legs are square to your bum. That'll stop you from getting a bad back, which nobody wants a bad back. So comfort, getting comfort, being efficient, means more fish in the net. So we've spoken about the setup regarding hooks, line and wagglers. So now the rod and the reel. The rod, 14 foot ultra, nice and soft because 
when you strike into these fish, most of the time they're going to be swimming away from you. So you don't want to too a stiffer rod and start bumping the fish. On a nice all through action rod, it's going to take the strain. 14 foot because I think it picks the line up a little bit better being that being that little bit longer it means that I can I can pick the line up a bit quicker because the bites are very very quick so I think it just just aids you in picking the line up so you can get straight into the fish real line two and a half pound float fish it might seem might seem really thin but it means that you can use a lighter waggler which means that the fish can't feel the weight of the waggler and that will get you more bites, more positive bites. The last thing the fish want to do is feel the weight of the waggler because they'll take the bait, they'll feel the weight of the waggler and they won't even pull it under. So it's all about balance, balancing the gear to get the most to get the most out of it. Look at those, they're absolutely pristine fish. Great big dace. One of the best tips that I can give you when fishing this method is it'd be very, very easy to cast your waggler in, miss a bite, then you have to reel all the way back and start the process again. What I like to do is my bait's all going in one area. If I miss a bite, I don't strike too hard. I only strike it enough to set the hook, but if I do miss the bite, my waggler will only be probably a yard or so from where it originally was, and I'm still in the baited area, which means I can get another run through my peg, and sometimes you get two bites at the cherry. So I've just missed a bite there like that. Notice I didn't strike too hard. And on the second strike, I'm in again. So by not striking like a madman and pulling the flow all the way through the peg because you missed a bite, it just shows you that the fish are either side of your, either side of your loose feed. And when it's like this, I don't want my, I don't want my maggots to all land in one spot. When I catapult them out, I'll catapult them so they do land uh, all over the place. I, I want the fish. Oh, missed two bites there. I want the fish to be well spread so the area is bigger. So on that second cat, on that second strike, if you miss the first bite, you're still in the zone. The action is absolutely frenetic. Quality dace. The fishing is just... The kind of stuff you used to dream of as a kid. <laughs> now notice I'm just changing the feed up a little tiny bit. I'm feeding. This time, while my rig's in the water, I'm just keep just keep changing it up. You've got to, you'll find that you can't just do one thing all day, because it's a river. The flow changes little tiny bits, and you, it, it's you've got to keep in touch with the fish. So be prepared. Be prepared to change your game. So to sum up, first thing is you need a venue that's that's got a lot of fish in. The River Y has certainly got that. It's a day ticket stretch of water. It's available to everybody. And if you do come down to here, a few things that I feel is important. One, you've got to be comfortable. Get your box set up, get everything around you so you're not on and off your box all the time. Once you get on your box to start your session, Unless it's for a call of nature, you shouldn't be getting off your box at all. The second one is feeding. In all fishing, feeding is paramount. It's the number one thing that you have to get right. And then once you get the feeding right, 
you need the right kind of rig to catch the fish. On this occasion, we're fishing the Waggler shallow on a river, a nice small dumpy Waggler. It means that it cocks quite quick. You see it dots down. You've got three number eights, which is still quite positive in probably two and a half foot of water. So you see all the shots go down and you're fishing straight away. Don't be afraid to alternate the way that you do your feeding. Like I say, like I've said before, sometimes I won't cast out, I'll feed and then cast over the top. You'll find that all different things work and you've just got to, you just got to work out which way is the best in that particular, in that particular time. That leads me back to the reel and the rod. A nice soft 14 foot rod is perfect. Picks the line up because you're going to be striking. You're going to be lifting the rod up and striking, but not too hard. And you don't want to be bumping any fish. And that goes hand in hand, goes hand, in hand with that is the, if you miss a bite, if you don't strike too hard, you'll get a second bite at the cherry, just, the, just this side of your loose feed put all those things together and it's a day of great sport.